So I'm going to call the meeting to order at 6.04. And before I get started, I want to let you know that we just have to do a little rearranging on the agenda <coughs> under the executive limitations section. We're going to add um, as E up, uh, update on the facilities project. And then we're just going to shift what is currently E down to F and G and F down to G. So does that make sense to everybody? So we'll just have an update um, right there after the, e, the new E will be a facilities update. Okay. Um, Chris Pearsall is here to do our minutes because mm -hmm. Sean isn't available. So thank you, Chris. No problem. All right. Is there any public comment? <coughs> yes. Hi, I'm Tom Larmouth. I'm a Moncton resident. I'm the co-president of the MAEA. Uh, I wanted to address an uh, agenda item from the March 11th agenda, where the board unanimously directed uh, the superintendent, Mr. Reen, to collaborate with MAEA to uh, seek a solution to an issue that was raised at the grievance that night. Uh, that was supposed to be reported out on the 26th. That wasn't. I looked for that on the agenda today. It isn't on the agenda today. Um, so I'll give a quick report out. And uh, from our perspective, uh, no collaboration has happened since the 11th. And the situation remains exactly the same as it was on the 11th. Um, thank you. Thank you, Tom. All right. Um, tonight our agenda looks a little different. Is there anyone else? OK. Um, we are in need of an executive session before we can continue on with our business. So, um, and for this ex executive session, we only need to invite Patrick in at this point. So we're going to ask our other our other visitors to step out for a minute. Um, it's under Title One VSA Five Three One Three A One A Contract. And I'm drawing a blank. All right, so we'll um, just need a motion to go into executive session um, and invite Patrick. All right, Andrew moved it. Is there a second? Caleb? Okay, um, all those in favor of going into executive session under Title I, BSA 5, 313A, 1A contracts. And inviting Patrick in, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. Chris, Chris, we came out at 6.33. Okay. Thank you. Will be noted momentarily. All right. Thank you. Everybody gets out of a minute. Okay. So now we're down to the consent agenda. Is there a motion to approve the consent agenda? So moved. Krista and Andrew seconds. All those in favor of approving the consent agenda, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. Now down to executive limitations monitoring update. The financial report was in your packet. Does anyone have any questions? Actually, I do. We, it, it looks like the uh, facilities and building lines still have a chunk of money in them. Is there any plans to run that out? That's the item that was added. Okay. We'll talk more about specifically what the plans are for that. Okay. Thank you. Caleb? Well, it just um, sounded like, in, in terms of just in, in the general topic of creating financial reports, understanding that. Um, I missed the last meeting, but the news about kind of changing in staffing. Has that been discussed at the board meeting yet? The news about changing? Oh, the staffing Howard in the, yes. Like, um, I'm just kind of wondering, are, are you, are things moving along? You're feeling okay about? They're moving along. The financial reports will continue to come out? And we will, you will continue <laughs> to get financial reports, <laughs> yes. You, you, um, but it sounds like a bit of a shake up okay. all at once. Yes. <coughs> Probably, yeah, a bit of a shake-up all at once is perhaps even an understatement. It was yeah. definitely a big shake-up, yeah. in part because there, were a lot of, there was a lot of internal movement to fill some of those positions, which is really exciting, but creates additional openings that we have to fill. So 
Um, we are, as of Monday, the only position that will remain unfilled in the finance team is the CFO. So all the other positions will have been filled as of Monday. So that's really exciting. Our team of five was a team of two for a little while. So we're getting them back up to speed, which is, which is a good thing. And the, and the work is underway right now for the uh, what will be business manager, not CFO. Um, and we hope to have somebody in place July 1 or as close to July 1 as possible. All right. Thank you. Any other questions about the financial report? Okay. We'll move down to the food service report. Any questions on that? Do you know if that's looking any more dire than it was, or is it about the same? <laughs> it's pretty equally dire. It's not any better than it was. Um, I think you're showing around a 71,000 um, deficit that we'll have to sort of make up for at the end of this year. Are we going <clears> to <throat> and, and anticipate something similar for next year? Well, we already anticipated <clears throat> something to the tune of $22,000 better, I think, next year than, than this year in terms of the contribution from the general fund. Mm. Um, so that's going to help make up for a portion of that at least. And then, then a lot of it, honestly, or at least a portion of it, is in the receivables. So just uh, basically meals that aren't paid for, for a whole variety of reasons. And I think not this board, but prior boards have had lots of conversations about how do we want to handle that. On one extreme, it is we refuse to sell food to kids or provide food to kids that owe money. And the other extreme is we don't do that at all. We feed kids, and it's going to cost us some money, and we just accept that. That has been the approach that has been taken. It's certainly an approach that I prefer. I know it's an approach that our food service director prefers, and it's the approach that prior boards have preferred. So that's been the approach we've taken, and it costs money. And that's part of that 71000 Right. Is it in the range of what it usually is, or higher? I think it's a little bit higher than it usually is. Uh, and then, you know, effort is made, uh, letters sent home oh, yeah. um, to collect from the money. Um, Encouragement to sign up for Free reduced help. lunch, yep. exactly. Yeah. Yep. yep, all of those things happen. And with mixed success, year to year. Sarah? Um, she talked about, I think every time there's like a half day or things like that, that that dips into it. Is there... I don't know if there's a way of working with them and being a little bit more creative about, you know, what the launch is that comes. I don't. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know if it's or potentially switching every so often the half day to being in the second part of the day and coming in before lunch. Or is there random thoughts that just food and money? Yeah. Yeah, that's it. I do think um, the half days has some impact because there are students that either are just going to wait and have lunch when school's right. out at home or, you know, something along those lines. Um, hard, to, hard to know exactly what that right. um, equates to in terms of dollars. And then hard also to, without that dollar figure, to understand. Like, I would, I would hate to make decisions about professional development because of how many kids we want to eat lunch that day. Yeah. Um, because we want to generate revenue through a food service program. Um, but it is a factor. It is a factor. Any other questions around the food service report? Okay. Moving down to the strategic plan the implementation plan, actually. Oh. So I'll start this by saying, yay. <laughs> <laughs> so We will, too. A few months before I was hired, um, or before I started as superintendent, this was on my mind about the need for our organization to have some clarity and purpose and direction um, and focus. And that is what this plan will provide for us. And... Um, a little more than two years to the day from the time that the action teams had their kickoff event, we have a strategic plan, which was shared with you in electronic form. 
these are the, the only two of these, although actually the, they're at the printers today. So these are the only two I'm aware of that are in existence, but many more coming. Um, and I can send this around, but I want to collect those back in the end. Um, actual hard copies of the plan itself. And, um, I just want to thank everyone involved in, in creating it. Um, you know, it took some time and it took some money to make as polished a document as what this is and, and given the professional appearance of it. But I think what it represents, um, if for no other reason the work it represents from lots of people for two years, um, it needed to reflect the importance and the effort put into that. So I think the time and the energy and the money spent to make um, such a high quality document is well worth it and, and is respectful of everyone's time uh, put into it. So really, really exciting. There it is. Um, I also share with you an implementation plan that sort of talks about the structure. So we have sort of the overarching um, committee or, or team that absolutely needs to have board, re <coughs> board representation. Krista has expressed interest, but please, if anyone else is interested, let me know. Um, that group will be formed <laughs> through an application process, <laughs> and I do have some applications coming in um, for various roles on that. But that will have a, a sort of broader perspective in the oversight and some forward thinking about resources, what's the next focus area going to be. So that group will be receiving a lot of information from various places, sort of synthesizing that and thinking about how do we move this plan forward on a bigger picture scale. Then we have implementation teams that each team has a focus on one of those focus areas. So next year we have two objectives from this plan um, that are going to be the focus and those teams will really zero in on that. Those teams will be selected based on their expertise uh, and their availability to do that work. So much more targeted um, to actually lead getting the work done sort of on the ground. Um, very exciting. Question? I have a quick question. So on the first page when it went when it goes through the ends policy, how did that how does that like translate into the other goals? This was something we couldn't alter and the other things are things we can alter. Like I'm just do they all tie to something in here? I'm just was it trying to figure out how they worked. Together. It's not sort of a one to one correlation. I didn't I noticed <coughs> that. Um, but generally speaking, sort of vision, mission ends. Yep. is board work, you set those things. Okay. And the strategic plan is the plan in what that I'm responsible for um, as how we will achieve, these. achieve those things. Okay. Is there a white paper or is there a backup detail behind this? I guess I'm not sure. Well, what you'd be looking for. So this is pretty high level. I'm, I'm just thinking about, I'll correlate it with the budget presentation, where we had we had a very high level document, and all of a sudden interested people wanted to get into the nuts and bolts. So obviously if there's been two years worth of work, there's a whole lot more thought process and some structures than you know, the six, eight pages that are mm -hmm. in this document are concerned, and if that's organized and documented anywhere as a white paper, if you will, that when somebody looks at that and they say, that's great, but what about this, this, and this, and I want to know what's underneath this, these, these goals and objectives, you can just say, okay, here it is in this mm -hmm. white paper, if you will. Um, so it's not organized in, in sort of the format of a white paper, but there are a lot of details behind those. So I mentioned the action teams before. Mm -hmm. So the action teams were responsible, they were basically given the goal language, sort of the high level goal that's in there. And they had to create objectives and measurable targets for each of those objectives. And they also created a series of strategic actions. So there are what is sort of the, the layers beneath what is in that high level document, hundreds, I don't think that's exaggerating at all, hundreds of strategic actions that at the time were anticipated as needed steps to achieve those measurable targets and those objectives and those goals. Um, that provided, it's a lot more information, a lot more sort of really detailed into the weeds that the vast majority of people wouldn't get into on a, on a sort of regular basis. Um, and they're all very subject to change, right? So that was the thinking at the time. Now, 
two years ago when this started. Then when we actually begin implementing this work, those are likely not to be the actual action steps that are taken to achieve those um, objectives and measurable targets and things. So between their subjectivity to change, because as we implement the plan and things evolve, we need to change, um, and the level of detail and the sheer number of them, it didn't seem appropriate for a document that's going to be distributed very widely. But that document exists still, and those implementation teams working with their colleagues will lean on that document to help guide their work. And it's something that if somebody was digging for more detail, they could Some, yeah. have, have, have a report, if you will, that is understandable. I can print them a, a document that shows everything that's there and all those accompanying details. And that would be an opportunity for me to have a conversation about those details and their subject and their uh, the mm -hmm. fact that they're subject to change and oh yeah I mean it's important to stress that it's a life document exactly sir did you I have just a quick question were you going to tell us which two objectives they were going to focus on yeah so there's a Sorry. there's an expertise and learning goal that is that we'll build a pre K through twelve um, articulated curriculum standards based curriculum or proficiency based curriculum. Two or um, yeah, number two, number two. Okay. And then there's a social, emotional, and physical development goal mm -hmm. that's around students will uh, demonstrate. Um, I forget how the language is worded, but it's effectively sort of um, emotional controls, uh, skills necessary to. Number one. Manage emotions. Manage emotions, exactly. Maintain positive relationships. Yeah. So, Patrick, you sort of shared that detailed level look in a draft form with us for a while back, right? Yep, and that, that was, was the draft. That was a spreadsheet that sort of thing that went on for exactly. lots of yes. tabs and lots yep. of, yeah. And that's the, that's the level of detail that the staff saw as well when we first created that and rolled it out and started the unpacking. All right. But as you, as you might recall, there's a, a lot there. I was daunted by it, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so as we met as a steering committee, um, which Krista and Don are both on, it was decided that that level of detail in that document would be probably counterproductive. Yeah, unwieldy. The social worker in me loves that you're doing this like qualitative social emotional stuff. I'm just curious, like objective three under it says like all MAUSD students experience a sense of value and belonging in their schools, and then the measurable target is 100% of students. Like, how would you measure that? Like a kindergartner versus a 12th grader. Like a 12th grader, you can kind of just ask them, "Do you feel valued?" But like, how does a kindergartner express? Like, I'm sure you guys think, like have a. Nope. But we oh, know okay. we have to do it. Okay. That's part of the work here. We didn't want to, in this process, we didn't want to feel bound by measures we already have. We wanted to be clear first about what do we want to achieve and what are the measures we're going to need to be able to achieve that. And if we can lean on things we already do, great. If we don't already do something, then we need to figure out how to do it. Cool. Any other questions? I have a logo. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, that's very cool. Many hours for many people thinking that through and <laughs> landing on that and work of our great consultant, um, Sherry Bannister. Been great. And that's a great segue. Schwein. You each get some. <laughs> I'll just send the bag around. Everybody gets a pencil, and you can, I guess, choose one of the colors of pen that you like. When's it going to go up on the website? The logo. So another phase of this, um, I actually have a meeting on Wednesday with Sherry, our um, our consultant and uh, a web consultant that she uses to talk about our web presence. Not just getting the logo on the website, yeah. but really yeah. thinking big picture about <laughs> yeah. our yeah. presence yeah. and yeah. getting away from Windows 95 look. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we need it. And so the challenge there being, how do we how do we create a web presence that really reflects what we want it to reflect and is something that we can maintain because it's probably right. too costly to pay somebody to keep it up to date every week or right. every two weeks or something like that. So that's going to be because ones that we can maintain easily aren't necessarily as dynamic. So we're going to have to walk that line and I don't know where we're going to land yet.
just got to find one of those picky kids to take care of it. But it's clear what we can't. They go on vacation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then they graduate. And then they graduate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like um, you're left with Swiss cheese. <laughs> 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 <That's> <laughs> But it's crystal clear to me we don't have the capacity to task someone from within to create our web presence. Uh, I think the best we can shoot for is to use folks from within to maintain. Yeah. It could be cool then to have like a link to you know, student graphic design and tech interests mm -hmm. where they work with us. Uh, on the maintenance piece. Yeah, I don't think there. Uh, there's probably ways to include students in, in some of this, but probably not as the drivers are not something that we're 100% dependent on to make happen. Yeah. My first official pay order pen. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and the great news about all the pens and pencils and and more that will be coming out in uh, the start of next school year is we had a for those of you that were around for it the Act 46. Um, process, come, <laughs> although it had its challenges, uh, it came with a, uh, I think it was a hundred or hundred fifty thousand oh, dollar transition, transition facilitation grant, grant <laughs> of which we still have some left, which this is not all books miss. So cool. we'll get to use, uh, and we'll, we'll be purchasing, uh, purchasing some more things that say in the USD on it. Is this out of that grant also? Yes. So printing things, all the costs are associated with the uh, printing of the strategic plan. Because of, of that logo. Because of the logo. <laughs> and uh, about, consultant fees. So. How about director's business cards? <clears throat> <laughs> business cards are, or even I was just thinking administrative business, business cards. And we don't going off and trying to convince people to have a conversation like you know, they don't have any idea who you are. I think business cards is a great idea. And they're at least really a, great, a greeting card. Expensive. Maybe you just call it a greeting card. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Any more questions about the strategic plan? All right, next is an update on the <coughs> BES fundraising for KEEC. That was in your packet as well. That's right. And I think the packet sort of explains it all. Basically, this is just so that you know this is happening because someone's, you know, raising money on behalf of the school. And uh, I think it'll be a great opportunity. It'll be for fifth and sixth graders to go to Kuwaitan, which is a great experience. So, and hopefully get to do it for little to no cost to the student or their families. I went to Kuwaitan as a fifth grader. Me too. It was great. <laughs> yeah. I survived the mosquitoes. I think they're much better now than they were <laughs> eons ago. Any other, any other questions? Okay. Now to our added item, which is an update on <clears throat> facility and projects. The, the question of what's going to happen with the rest of that money that we haven't spent? Joel's here to talk to you some about that. So, my name is Joel Fitzgerald. I haven't met most of you. I've met some of you, but <coughs> I'm the facilities director. Um, Patrick and I met earlier today, and um, I did kind of a broad um, handout for you guys to look at as we talk about it. So, um, I don't know if you want to pass them on. Um, and, and I'm not sure what um, we're going to do, but I guess we're going to walk through a little bit. Can I sit right here? Yeah. Okay. okay. Do you have any extras, Joel? Oh, I have a bunch. Yeah, I, I, 15. I didn't even know how many board members we had. Uh, so I will have to find. Lucky 13. <laughs> So basically what we did is we're a, a, a small review of what we did last year and then what we plan on doing between now and then. Um, and what we plan to do now between now and uh, June 30th and then at the end it's just a little bit for next year. Um, Patrick, you didn't see this. And I actually finished this at about 515. So the math at the end of all this is $940,222.32. Is um, well, we think we're gonna um, with a million between you know from last from July 1st last year to, to June 30th this year, you know, it's a million dollars, and we think we're pretty close. And we left a little money for fluff, you know, for overages and underages and, and all that stuff. Um, I also have at the end, I have three pages of smaller things that we put in and take it out of a million, and that'll probably in the report. I didn't 
um, without Howard, I didn't have the opportunity to do a spreadsheet. So, um, so I, I don't know. Do you want us to walk through this, Patrick? Is that how you want to run through it? I think if you can kind of walk through sort of the overviews of, of some of the big things last year, okay. a bit about what's happened this year, what's planned to happen for the rest of this year, and then briefly what we're thinking about for next year. Okay. Which okay. next year starts July 1. So just a, a broad, a general <coughs> review of what last year from what I've seen, I, I started November 1st. and then, So the, um, we saw a lot of flow tech in the Mount Ave hallways, um, LED lighting throughout Mount Ave, uh, painting in the hallways, ceiling tiles in the hallways, furniture throughout Mount Ave. And they did what I call phase one of the renovations of the bus barn. Um, from, and they did some grounds equipment upgrades. So what I see what they did last year is they kind of did a general appearance as you walk into school and, and, and a general comfort feeling, which I thought was, was well needed. I thought they did a nice job of that. So improvements for 2019 um, in following the superintendent's um, lead um, we're going to um, we're put a lot of emphasis on school security and school safety. Um, so we, we got some bids out. And um, so the bid on the public address system and, and to add cameras to all the schools, um, a mobile access for the district notification live time, which means the superintendent can, can talk to the whole district office cell phone, what, you know, what's going on in case there's a, 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 an incident. So. That, that bid came in at $381,480, and they're going to start that right off. And that, you that's know, for all these things above it? Sorry. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. And, and that's a public address system, cameras, um, surveillance for all the hallways, general areas around the buildings, um, all the entrances and all that. And with that comes the added feature that in the future, if we go to door locks, slide cars, and all the, all the entrances and all that stuff, it'll all tie right in. So, it's, so that'll it's give a, you the backbone for it. Excuse me? That'll give you the backbone for the security yep, system. Yep, yep. <laughs> and everything else can go on right on. I mean, it, eventually you can do, you can add your light controls, your heat controls, and all that stuff. So this is a base of, of where we're going to go in the future, what, what we think should happen in the future. So we, the, the company that we have, you know, they bid both jobs, and so we got a little better price. We had a couple companies that wanted to bid on it, but a lot of the companies, they like to do it separate, so we we're, um, were fortunate to have a company that gave us a break out and do both, and, and then make sure that all the components are compatible. So, and with this work, we did a lot of work with our IT department to make sure that everything that, you know, is, is compatible and, and is um, gonna work with everything. So, um, one of the things we also really um, worked on, we were looking at a service window at Mount Abe in the front lobby. Um, one of the problems at Mount Abe is people can, can swipe in and walk in and just keep right walking by. So we want to put what's called a service window there so we can greet the people, we can ask them what they can do, and they can sign in and all that. And, and that way the office staff and everybody knows who's in our schools. Right now we just, we can go right in. So. Um, you know, that's where we're getting bids on that right now. We're, we set aside $20,000 for that. If you, if you can picture Mount Eve as you walk in, the left-hand side of those main doors is basically a solid brick wall with a single yeah. door that has a window about that mm -hmm. wide. And that's the only view from the front office mm -hmm. into the lobby to see yeah. who's going by. And then, so, um, and then we also doing a district lock upgrade um, for lockdown systems to make it faster and better at it. Right now, a lot of doors, I notice these doors in this school, when we walk through this school, they have keys on both sides, which there's no speed to it. So um, we've talked to experts and safety people, and the best thing that is, is to push and turn. And that way, you know, not just anybody can lock and unlock it, but you have to make a conscious effort of what you're doing. But you also, you don't have to, you know, pull out keys or find keys and, and all that stuff. So we think it's going to be um, faster. And also what it does is it, it gives us the ability to get closer to a one key system to all the schools. I mean, if you've ever seen our custodians, they've got a handful of keys. And, and so um, we're, we're working really hard on that. So we, we, we've allotted 143000 for that. And there's some grant money invested in, involved in all this. So some of these schools do have grant money that we're going to put in together with this. We did get about $75,000 in safety grant money, um, but it'll do, it does different things in different schools. That's sort of the pot of money. It's locks in some schools, it's shades in other schools, it's PA system or a contribution to the PA system and others. So it's a combination of things, but in total it's $75,000, which is great. 
We also did a con contract with a Turner Science Group that came around and checked our air. Um, and they also did some training with us on air and they worked with the students. And um, so <laughs> that was 14999 And um, we think we're, the report's coming out the end of next week. Um, it's going to come to our district and then um, we'll have a discussion on what we're going to do in the report. But overall, I think we're, we're, our air is good. Um, all the reports that we have were better than we thought we were. And um, so we we're pretty excited about that. So um, um, we also have a, a $10,000 start for consulting for Truex Collins for the, the bathrooms at Mount Aid, the locker rooms. Um, so we've started that and, and they're getting stuff ready to put out to bed. The Norris Group, 4,500 consulting on the cameras and, and the intercom system. Um, bus barn renovation, phase two. Now the bus barn was really weird, so I tried to put it in phases to make it easier to understand. So bus barn phase two is, is the paving and upgrade in front of the paving. Right now the water runs into the bus barn when it rains, and the, and the road is <coughs> actually higher than, so it goes, it's funny because you got the road, you got the driveway, and you got the bus barn, so it's three tiers. but. This year, the driver's ed car was frozen in ice inside the bus barn, so we're going to that a little bit. Is That's the, the one that teaches the dogs. Is that the old airplane? Where's the bus airplane? Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. It used to be the old airport. So that's phase two. <coughs> um, so that's, that's going to start about June, right after school is out. And then I got bus barn renovation number three. Now, we need more locker room space and we need athletic space for, for athletes with football and all that. So we call it uh, Bus Barn Renovation 3, which is turning the north end, I believe it's the north end. Um, there is a, a space that's always been the football locker room. So we're going to renovate that and make it, I call it a three season game preparation room. It won't have any water facilities right now, but it'll give us the, the you know, because there's sewage there and water there, it gives us a future to look forward to. So what it's going to do is it's going to act and Patrick, um, we worked really hard at making this thing so it's tied aligned. It can be used equally as men and women. So mm -hmm. if there's a one sport going on, you can have a visiting team and, and our home team in that building. So we thought that was pretty important. Football halftime, if it's raining, they have a place. They don't have to go here. There. But we also thought it was important to you know, give the teams coming to our school something that they can go into as well. A lot of times you go to school, you see the, the visiting team on the field and the home team's in. We thought that we would make it, you know, really pleasant for both teams. So this also eliminates the need for what's been called the football trailer, which is just yeah. after the bus barn on the left. So it's sort of bus barn, crooked shipping container thing, <laughs> <laughs> then the trailer that is a safety risk, and then the White House. So that's sort of that's the first impression of Mount Abe as you go down the airport drive. Yeah. Bus barn is a much better first impression now mm -hmm. after last year's work. Um, we're working on the crooked storage container, yeah. <laughs> um, and this will allow, uh, allow us to get rid of that trailer as well. What in the White House is? The White House is currently uh, vacant. Mm -hmm. um, upstairs is basically storage. Downstairs was storage of things that we shouldn't be storing. We should have just thrown out. We've now thrown it out. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> some of the space that the, the bus barn was currently storing things in is now going to be stored in the basement of the White House. Uh -huh. so that it's allows us to use. It's, it's a little white house. building right in the corner yeah. by the Did gate, Did it have basically. a vet placement before? Or no. Yeah. Different, different corner. Just once you turn into the parking yeah. lot and you pass the bus. Yeah. Your brain just kind of shuts it out if you drive. It's 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 they used to educate students in it. Oh, yes. it was like, was it the alternative? Yes. Program? Well, it was special okay. ed. Okay. That in yeah. the superintendent's office. And Before that, yeah, with superintendent's oh, office. Oh, there you go. It's been a few different things. I looked into it. I can tell you more. So yeah, the <laughs> crooked container hopefully can go down there somewhere. We we got it to sell it, and it's really nice. I mean, it, it's it's okay. really nice. So I'm not a big fan of shipping containers placed here. And there <laughs> yeah, it it it. they're doing People some crazy things, things cool with shipping. Tiny homes. <laughs> <laughs> they, they do. And the supervisory office. <laughs> so we're not being inside. Slide Patrick under. He can Murphy bed back out when he needs to go. We did put the trailer on front porch for him, and it's on the website for sale. To just to, to oh, that's that. good. We've had a couple of lights. So bus barn renovation number four, we ten to twenty thousand. This is to create a space for our maintenance staff to work in the winter on our equipment. Nice. The district and, and the voters have been very, very supportive in allowing you know in, improvements on equipment. So we want to you know take care of the equipment and and. 
one of the things that we need the opportunity to is in the winter when you have the downtime is to is to work on our summer equipment and be, get it ready for summer. And right now we don't have that opportunity. This spring we hit the ground. None of our stuff was ready. We had to wait for warm weather to get it ready and all that stuff. So hopefully, and this will help, you know, the driver's ed cars from being frozen and all that stuff. So or some of our custodial staff being <laughs> frozen to the ground. <laughs> right. the you know, it's, I mean, and, and we understand that the board wants us to um, lessen our reliance on outside contractors. So we think this is a good opportunity for us and to include some of the students with our tech program to change the oil in our vehicles, to grease our vehicles and all that stuff. So we think it's a little bit more doing that. And part of this includes um, pouring a new fo floor in the bus barn, yeah. which is currently kind of broken up. Yeah. And that'll allow potentially for that point to be higher that we can grade away from yeah. to get the water going away from the bus barn instead of into the bus barn, which yeah. is kind of a good idea. And we think that we're going to heat this lab, which is kind of cool. It's the most efficient way to heat, so we're, we're pretty excited about that, too. So, um, <clears throat> so um, ADA improvements. Um, we've done some of them already. Some we're working on now, and some we're going to work on in the future. So we put new bathroom partitions in, the boys and girls um, gang bathrooms. We did two girls, two women, young ladies. I don't, I don't know how to say it, but over break. Um, we did both of the women's gang bathrooms. We're pretty excited about that. So if you have the opportunity to go in the high school, take a look. Now, what we did on those is if when we do bathroom, excuse me? That's a gang Does that just mean like it, multiple stalls? It's a lot, stalls it's a lot. Or? yeah. It's, like the it's main, <laughs> like it's just, it's, yeah. Shower, 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 shower. Okay. Oh, yeah. we're talking shower, you're yeah, talking yeah, showers or toilets? Um, no, these are, these are the toilets, the, the, the stalls for, mm -hmm. for the bathrooms. So is this the, like the main bathroom that we've been walking in that's been really yeah, yeah, nasty? Yeah. It just got redone. Well, the women's, it, it's a work in progress. It's a work in progress. A smaller <laughs> smile, I think, is appropriate. But you just, the the just the partition. <laughs> just the partition. So what we did is to put them in compliance with ADA and to help, you know, help the appearance. And, yep. and so we, we did a, quite a, we, we feel quite a bit of um, work in the bathrooms. We made them compliant. We put in new faucets that are touchless faucets. Um, we put in more hair dry, uh, hand dryers, um, battery operated soap dispensers. Um, and in putting in these partitions, what can happen is when we, when we go and do more upgrades in the bathrooms, we can take them out and reuse them. And, and we, we bought a neutral color, so any color schemes that we put in, it, it all works. So um, we did that piece over break. Um, but before break, um, Okay, the hand-free faucets, we put those in over break. Yeah, and the outer door openers and the outside windshield we did earlier in the spring, um, which uh, made most of the doors or all the doors that we needed to be compliant to push the button open. We did all that earlier in the spring. And that includes the nurse's station. Even little spaces that you wouldn't think needed them, we put them in, and they do in fact need them. So um, we, we spent a lot of money and, and time on that this spring. So um, we put in three back chairs for the stairwells. Um, to, to help evacuate students in, in time of emergency, which, um, you know, they're nice in case, they're in cases, and, and we, we feel pretty proud of that. We did that earlier in the spring. Um, so over break, we also did um, new concrete ADA walkways off the cafeteria at Mount Abe. So if you go around Mount Abe, there's three doors or four doors on the side, and, and there was a step like this, and a lot of the students were going out after lunch to go out in the fields and eat, but not everybody could have access to it. So what, what we did is we just, we did a gradual slope, you can't even see it. So it made those doors more functional, not just for ADA compliance, but also the students and the teachers aren't dragging, uh, dragging the mud back in the building. Mm -hmm. And that helps our staff as well, because um, the, the kids want to come out and they were just dragging it back in. So um, we thought that was a good place to start right there. So, and also added, what it does is it helps trucks when they deliver fruit and all that stuff, they can back up and they don't have to haul the dollies through the mud. So. We thought that was a nice improvement. Um, we did an air filter system for the industrial arts area. So um, when they're grinding metal and they're welding and all that stuff, we improve the air movement. So the rooms are, um, it's a lot more pleasant to be in those rooms and it's a lot safer for the students. So we did that as well. Um, and coming up in June, um, Mount Abe bleacher resurfacing. As you can see, some of the bleachers have holes in them from lacrosse balls, baseballs, and all that stuff. We can't get the new tops for them anymore, so we went with <coughs> them, and those are going to be done in June. And the wood's more durable. 
Um, we think it's, it's going to be a nice finish. But what it did is we were lucky that, that Hussey, we could just retop him and we didn't have to buy on the bleach. So we were pretty happy with that. Um, <clears throat> Does Hussey provide the wood? Um, yeah, it was, it was getting coming. local. Or? It's, um, they're bringing it. It, uh -huh. was, it was actually the contract was signed before he got here. Um, so we did some safety mats on the walls in the, the wrestling room. The room, the mats were deteriorating. Not only were they torn, but they, the actual fiber inside was deteriorating. So, you know, they weren't as safe. So we added all those for the basketball court and um, for the wrestling room. The wrestling room has not been installed yet. Um, but those are those are coming right up because we're actually going to paint it first, so um, we did that. Um, <clears throat> the pool filtration system we we put the we we put the the pool out to bid on work that that we thought needed to be done, and the bid came back at two hundred and seventy thousand dollars for a total renovation of the pool. So because of the safety needs and the other needs of the district, we thought that we'd piece it out and we do the the biggest biggest need first. And that's the, the the filter system. So the bid came back on that at 105,000, and that includes a variable speed motor that'll save energy, and um, the backwashing system will save water and energy as well. So, and the chlorine system, all this stuff's going to save money and to save energy in the long run. Um, what, what's left to do in the pool? What's well, the we, other hundred thousand? There's a couple things on that pool that we wanted to do. We wanted to put a new main drain system in the bottom. Right now, there's one that that works. But eventually, it's going to go out of compliance because it's kind of on the back wall. Mm -hmm. And what they'd like to do is have them on the bottom. So um, we'd like to do that, and that was 50000 We'd like to, to do some grouting and, you know, do some lines, um, you know, like do a, a brake line, which is new tile across the brake that tells deep end from the shallow end. Yeah. Um, we'd like that. <coughs> If you look at that pool right now, and I'm going to try to do this, why, well, you know, somehow we're going to try to, but there's no ladders in the deep end to get out of that pool. And um, there's only one escape, and that's in the, in the shallow end, and that's really something that needs to be addressed. So um, I've done it before because I, I did pools before, and if I can, you know, sneak in putting in rails with our staff, I'm going to try to do that because it's really, really important. So um, is the pool, what's the status of the pool right now? The status is up and running. It is running. Um, it is. Um, we we bought a new vacuum. Time, though. Yeah, yeah. Was it down for a while? Was it out of use for a while? I didn't think so, and then when somebody had said, it, yeah, yeah, but it's basically been continuously in operation. Right. Okay. So the other piece that's really big on that pool is you have what's called a gutter system. And what that gutter system does is it filters, and it it's, it's basically a skimmer on the top of the, the water the first two and a half feet. Right now, that is not functional. Now, one of the things in this filter system that makes it so expensive is there's what's it's called a bladder tube. And these, these gutters are supposed to run, they run on gravity right down to the, right down to the bladder tank. And, and um, that's part of the 279,000. So as part of the 105,000 for the future, we're having the bladder tank put in. So in the future, in the second or third phase of the pool, we can get those, those gutters going. My goal and our goal, I, you know, the conversations I've had with swim teams, every, we like to have some non-sanctioned swim meets in that pool. We think it would be good for the community. Mm -hmm. We think the kids would love it. So that's our goal maybe two or three years down the road is to have some non-sanctioned um, swim meets there. Mm -hmm. and, and, and in order to do that, those, and, and to increase the efficiency of your pool, it, those gutters are key to that. But right now we've got 60-year-old galvanized pipe running those gutters and those need to be busted out and put back in. Um, so right now we're actually running the pool just on the main drain, and, and um, it's not as efficient as it can be. And the pool, <coughs> the experts say it's not as fast as it can be. So that's the goals on the pool. So um, we also set aside 35,000. We got some quotes for a new mobile library workstation that's for the library to have access to all mobile mobile things for the library i'm not sure really what it entails um, we have some bids um, we're working with jessica at the high school and the library and, and they came back and this is the bids that they gave us so what they, what it's basically they, the circulation desk if yeah, you remember walking yeah, into the library yeah, sort of in the center of the hub of the library 
And one, one of the advantages of having it mobile, if in the future, if Mount Abe ever does, you know, a rebuild or whatever, it allows us to use this piece of equipment into the new library, into the new space. So that was pretty important, you know, thinking about the future. Yeah, not so much mobile that you can move it daily, but mobile that it can be moved at some point. <clears throat> and then last um, for, for this pot of money is $20,000 for, for Bristol Elementary School. Right now their playground. Um, all the water off the hill and all the hills run onto the playground. So a lot of the chips and everything and all the water is running in the neighbor's yard. There's complaints about that. So the town of Bristol and the state of Vermont, they're doing a study right now, a water runoff study. And um, they hope to have a plan in place by fall um, to, to see what we're going to do with the water, how we're going to slow it down, how we're going to change it, and how we're going to improve the quality of the playground. Is, um, as well as improve the quality of our partnership with our neighbors because it's right now it's it's, it's really not a good place. So um, would that include any planting, perhaps? Well, to help with that, it's such a barren wasteland. It right is, it is. It's like a desert. And I've talked to Kevin about that. They're looking about oh, putting an outside gosh. classroom, and part of the out outside classroom mm -hmm. is trees around there to, to create shade for the students. Mm -hmm. So that's all they're going to put that in the back corner. Uh -huh. So it's 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 quite a work in progress. And and there's a young man, Cole. His name is Cole. I don't know if anybody knows Cole, but he's actually in the Boy Scouts. But he's actually doing the work on the outside classroom. He's getting all the bits. We went, you know, I taught him how to shop for rocks. Where to shop for rock? I mean, nice big slabs. Mm -hmm. So he's doing some fundraising. He's doing some work with the Boy Scouts. So we're working pretty hard on that. But. Part of the outside classroom is plantings, and they also want to do some gardens um, with the whole thing. So they're working, they're working it all together. Yeah, but I'm also looking to see what Kevin wants to, you know, what he needs. Being my first cycle here, I don't know exactly what the needs are for playgrounds. Does he want a kickball field out there? Does he want a soccer field out there? So I'm in conversations with Kevin on that and what he really wants out there. Do you want to just give the two-minute version of what next year's million is targeted for? Locker rooms, locker rooms. Um, I we we did we had some failures in the locker rooms, um, and we had we had some mold in there, and so we we had some professionals come in, um, take a look at it. We had the mold taken out. Um, we did some repairs in the showers, but um, the showers in the locker rooms are really really in, in, in rough shape. And so we, with Cullens, Truex Cullens, um, they're doing some work and we're putting them out to bed, but um, yeah, that's that's the big projects for next year. And what, what are we thinking, Patrick, 9750? We I think it depends on, yeah. on, so all four bathrooms or four locker rooms need work, need basically total replacement. Um, I think to do all four probably crosses the million dollar mark. Uh, so it's gonna be a matter of, What's our approach? We, we could do all four, and it would probably require dipping into the reserve fund that we have. Or we'll have to do some something smaller than all four. The trick being, the ideal is to do probably a top and a bottom because the, of the infrastructure and how that kind of all works. But then you're doing all of one gender and not any of the other gender. In this case, it would probably be all boys because that's where we have the mold and the tiles have fallen off and everything else. You can't. So to do all boys and not touch the girls, doesn't seem like the appropriate thing, so probably if we're not going to do all four, it'll be one boys and one girls locker room. Mm -hmm. But we don't have the cost estimates yet. Um, but I'm already nervous about my sticker shock when it comes in, um, just because I know when you're talking about costs oh, yeah. with plumbing and commercial. And there's no, uh, there's no uh, innovative <laughs> financial method to uh, span a budget. To group money together. Uh, there's policy <coughs> language that prohibits bifurcating <laughs> projects. So we couldn't necessarily spend a portion, like buy something now that's a part of that project to spend money on this year's budget and save some next year. And every plan that we've looked at at Mount Abe for the future has these locker rooms staying in the same place. Okay. So we feel like investing in them mm -hmm. is long term. You know, that, you know. We, and we're also getting, we're hoping to get bids that we can delete things and we can add things. And one of the things that right now is we're thinking, since we're going to the bare bottom, why don't we replace the plumbing down underneath the floors and all that stuff? So we're going to have that price 
Um, you know, every surface we're getting, we're getting three different numbers on surfaces, whether we're using tile, sheet rock, mm -hmm. you know, press board, you know, flooring, we're getting tile, we're getting epoxy, we're getting everything, you know, we're putting everything out there, so. Sort of taking the approach of, you know, rather than have to tear them apart anyway and, and just put something back over the aging plumbing infrastructure, like, it, it makes sense to, to fix it, fix it, right? Starting with what's behind the wall or, unfortunately, in the concrete slab, cutting all that out and redoing that, and it's just, it's going to add cost and time. And part of the challenge is where do you stop when you start chasing those things? So we change all the plumbing infrastructure in the locker rooms well, that feeds a main drain that's out in the hallway by the pool. So you're going to have all this new plumbing sending water very uh, more efficiently out into this other thing that's just as old as everything you just replaced. So those are the add alternates depending on where the costs come in <coughs> so that we can say, yes, we can afford to do this, or no, we can't, and we'll kind of peel it back. Those bathrooms surprised me. I mean, when we opened, when we went to the mold, the mold went to a, a wall in the stairwell. But those bathroom showers in that school are, are only sheetrocked of steel studs with tile over them. And, and there's no concrete backer in those when those were built. And that was no water very even membrane. It was, it was really surprising. How old is that locker room? There, there's old school. Yeah. So when was that built? 69. Wow. But I was yeah. equally surprised that we didn't find asbestos in there. Yes. So. Yeah, right. And part of the part of the scope of the work will include um, air handling as well to remove sort of the moisture from those spaces. Um, so to try and really be thinking down the road for these spaces that tend to have a lot of moisture, let's try to be That's thoughtful why I was about wondering how to control. If that was part of the quote in the pool. Did that include any of the moisture? Our consultant, our consultant said the air was pretty good in there. In there. Yeah, yeah, I was surprised because when I went in there, I was really <coughs> surprised too. But we checked it, and um, you know, and, and our guys are doing. We're getting better at managing the air in that school. Um, going back to the Turner Group, there's a lot of there's a lot of pieces to that heating system that we're not utilizing. And as we get better at it, we're going to get better at it. And and over in that area, actually, the kitchen area and the pool area is one of the areas that that we need to tighten up some of the perimeters on. And, and so we're working on that. We're working on that. The pool adds a lot of uh, moisture to the building in general. Mm -hmm. Very difficult to cut the vapor drive off in that pool, the rest of the building. And it was really interesting, the two consultants that we had. It was really funny. I'll be really brief, but one of them liked the cover and one of them didn't. And one of them liked it because, you know, it kept the moisture out. It kept everything. And then the other one said that the water, it didn't allow the water to oxidize as it would is in natural air. So it was really funny. These two leading <laughs> experts, you know, they were was, was standing right beside each other and they go, I don't like it, I like it. I like it. So it's it kind of fun. So. Well, we have it, so. We, we like, like it. it. Yeah, <laughs> like it lot, so. Can I just ask one more question sure. about the, um, all the safety upgrades on all the buildings, mm -hmm. or all, all the doors, mm -hmm. and how that works with ADA and a person's ability to get in and out of a space? Well, the part that we, all the doors are going to have paddles on them. Paddles? Uh, in the hand, I call them paddles. Okay. Lever yeah. handles. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> the biggest thing for us is, is we're not going to change, we're going to keep, unless we hear, you know, needs that we need to, um, is from our quote is just changing the lock sets, the way that we lock the doors, but everything else is going to stay the same. I don't know so if So the things that are not, you can't get in, we'll continue to not be able to get in. But those are things, you know, that we address as we go along and, uh -huh. and as we learn. And, and I mean, since since I've came here, we've learned a lot about accessibility, mm -hmm. the needs of the district. And, and we've addressed them and we will continue to address them as, as the need. Um, Do you have a specific example, Krista? Yeah. No, I was just curious to know, I know that there's different approaches to locking down and keeping open and propping doors and not propping doors. and. Um, I just wondered if the security protocol and then the ways to keep doors secure um, is counterintuitive to the daily or multiple times a day access that a student might need. So I don't. I yeah, don't the security know. methods for locking doors can't violate ADA. Uh -huh. right, so right. <coughs> whatever method you come up with, 
you have to maintain ADA. And they're not supposed to break fire code either. Right. You know, Egress always has to As far as blocking right. doors open, <coughs> that's, a, you know, that's a fire code. You know, and, and, yeah, yeah. And for the most part, with the locks that we're talking about, it's basically making it so the the key system works in a more efficient manner mm -hmm. and so that a, a teacher or an adult in the room doesn't have to find their key, mm -hmm. go into the hallway and lock the door and go back into the room <coughs> in the event of an emergency. That's Why? the gist of what we're trying to, to change mm -hmm. with the locks. Kevin? Just, um, a logistics question, I guess. Um, there's a lot of work here been to be done in the next 60 days. So is like June 30th a hard stop that all this work has to be done or it can be in process and accrued or is it like... It has to be... Done in invoice? So any, right, so the work has to be completed. So any materials, like some of these things are heavy on materials and lighter on labor. We can order all the materials and have the materials arrive ahead of June 30, and that counts in this year's money. But any labor that happens July 1 or later <coughs> has to come out of next year's money. So, it's, yeah, so there's it, a contingency, you've got a contingency on And honestly, it's a giant pain because it's so hard, so there's so many moving parts to any one of these projects, let alone the combination of all the projects, to get it all dialed in to the right dollar amount, because we don't want to leave a lot of this necessarily sitting on the table because there's plenty of work to be done. But we also don't want to way overshoot because there's only so much money to go around. Um, and then to get all the timing done so that it's it's in and done and installed by June 30 and not July 1, it, it's a really difficult sort of walk. It's very hard. It's hard work. I mean, school gets out of June 15th and we've got to have work done by July 1st. It's like, come on, really? Mm -hmm. That's why people like bonds. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, and then you throw in, those, for example, today, um, I've been in communication with Joel. Our, both of our um, sort of reps with the architecture firm and legal counsel on facilities um, because of bid law and things of that nature. So the locker room that we want to try to get done this summer when, kid, when kids aren't in the school and we're not tearing this moldy thing apart in October, um, because it is likely to be over 500000 that would require um, pre-qualifying bidders, which there's a 60-day waiting period once we've posted the, the bids, um, that we can't have anything start after that. And it just, there are lots of things that make it hard to have a timeline that works. So trying to navigate those find, you know, find ways around those if there are ways around them, and if they're not, trying to get them started as soon as possible, knowing that we started talking about locker rooms and getting that work done 10 weeks ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Everything just takes a long time. And one of the things that we're going to try to do better in facilities is trying to use the vacations better during the school year. Um, you know, do, there's no better time in Vermont to be flooring in a school than, than over breaks in the winter. I mean, the humidity's down. Um, there's no better time in Vermont to paint inside a school to, is the winter in February when the air's dry. So these are the things, you know, now that we're here, we're going to try to work on that, you know, in the future. And we'll get there. It's, you know, it's, we'll just get there. But and that'll help with the time, the short time. And those are really just the big projects that are in the works. Yeah, like I said, I had three pages of small things that were just, you know, Adora, we got some stuff coming your way. We, you know, we got some numbers on floor maintenance. You know, we're trying to do a lot better job on maintenance. Like all the hardwood floors in the district, Lincoln School hasn't been touched in eight years. So we got some numbers coming in on, you know, repolishing those floors up there. And yeah, eight years goes by really fast. <laughs> And, uh, you know, those are the things that, you know, we are maintenance and it's what we're supposed to do. So we have a lot of, um, a lot of carpets to clean this summer and, and we're looking at contractors for that. But just, just a maintenance piece, you know, to stay with, men, you know, preventive maintenance is, is the way to stay ahead. And, and so um, we're working really hard on that too. So. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Joel. Thanks, Joel. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. All righty. Feel free always to write me or call me and you know if you ever have any questions. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Chris,
get up for it, you're going to give that to Karen so she can add it to the board minutes? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Our next item is the new F. Is the new F is an action item to accept the monitoring report for 2.1 treatment of current or prospective students and parents slash guardians. Is there a motion? Caleb. Move. All right. Second. Is it? You have your second. Now you can talk about it. Does anybody have any information on their worksheet they want to share? Did John, you get that was Caleb and, and Andrew. Andrew. Oh. He's on fire tonight. <coughs> so I, I had just one comment, I think, is there was some discussion about a couple of the appendices had um, referred to Mount Abe documents. And so I, I'm assuming that there's, there's documents for all the other schools that they just haven't mm -hmm. integrated yet but it doesn't really indicate that there are some so for example i think a number of the the pieces of evidence may be pointed to the co-curricular athletics and activities document for mount abe that would be specific to mount abe because elementary schools don't for the most part operate sports programs except for lincoln and lincoln does i think just soccer and basketball is what lincoln organizes <clears throat> so that one isn't something that would so you appear wanna, anywhere else. Would you widen those just to be district wide for consistency's sake? Or no? Is there? I guess if there's a particular document that you're thinking about, well, yeah. I, I so saw, staff handbooks, for example, those are consistent across schools, yeah. or in that all schools have them. I'm looking Parent at appendix A, B, C, <coughs> and G. B, C, and G. A, B, C, and G. One of them is the athletic. Some of them, I, it's just a new point. Right, so enrollment point, yes. I guess my, I'm assuming that that stuff will be integrated into district-wide and post Yeah, that's, there's, there's certainly among the list of things that we need to become more consistent on mm -hmm. um, in terms of documents that exist across schools. So thinking about the um, parent and family handbook, mm -hmm. um, that may be less consistent than, say, staff handbooks across schools. So there's definitely still some work to do as we grow the system and become more consistent. Okay. Any other comments? Questions? So, uh, like, just to follow up on Kevin's question, eventually you would, you would maybe envision a, a handbook for the district that's sort of welcome to the district, or would the district sort of produce six? And some of it depends a little bit on, on what the handbook, because there are some places that we are consistent across schools, um, and appropriately so, and there are other places that we need to vary school to school, because each school still is it sort of has its own identity and, and its own sort of culture, and we don't want to necessarily be stepping on that identity and that culture. So right. it may still it may still be that there are six, but there may be greater consistencies across the six um, where there can be. But and, and some of it may be there's consistency that all six schools have, mm -hmm. um, depending on what it is we're talking about. Well, I'm sure some of the handbooks also are just logistics around the building, which are different. Right. So. Where do people drop off their kids? Where are they supposed to pick them up? Right. And so that's, that's that. <clears throat> Frankly, there are a number of things that we have to sort of walk that line with. Where, where do we need to be consistent across schools? And where is it okay and perhaps more than okay? Where is it important that we're different across schools? But you could even, I, I won't say it. It's getting too far into the weeds. <laughs> and, and the reality is the... The number of things that we have to do along those lines, it's years of work to get us where ultimately I think we, we want to be in terms of consistency uh, across our schools. Well, all the different documents that everybody seems <coughs> to steer by. Well, documents, <coughs> practices, procedures, <coughs> there's a lot of different sort of angles to that.
Any other comments? Is everything Is written in policies in the negative, like what we don't want? Executive limitations, yes. Okay. Yes. They are the shall nots. The shall not. Yep. Yeah, the shell nots. I'm wondering if we want to find a way to weave in opportunity for student voice and how that would look. Because we see all the things we're not, well, we see all the things you're doing with different policies and procedures, but. It would be great to see examples of where, you know, students have uh, some input into the way things happen in their schools, and I don't know how that's written. Would that be in evidence? Mm. But not in the shall not. Yeah, because that's <laughs> really harm. Right. Rain. The, right. Um, the executive limitations really falls under what the board is telling the superintendent they right. can't do. So that wouldn't really be a place for it, but it could certainly. So if, if for the strategic plan, for instance, we wanted to ensure that there was an opportunity for student voice in the way that rolled out, mm -hmm. um, how do we hold Patrick accountable to demonstrating that? So one way is when we're, to, when we're looking at a monitoring report where it could be used where you could use the student voice to to share the value of that that is something the board values that it's something the board likes to see as Patrick has said at other meetings like it's helpful for me to know what you want to see mm -hmm. sharing that as a value of the board gives him that direction just so that when he's creating a monitoring report he's he's saying to himself oh yeah they want to see that student voice. I'm going to go get some of that evidence to, to show that student voice. They told me they like that student voice or they, they want so to. So monitoring of what? So it's, we'd have to go look at a specific policy where we say, you know, is there a place there that would, um, where evidence could be used uh, with the student? And that's really how you add, how you share the value with him so that and it becomes a part of the conversation. So when he's, next time he's writing the report or whatever he's thinking about. So it would be maybe like the ends. Well, right. that's a piece for me that I think, so really the best way to secure it, which would be challenging, if you think beyond me, if you just think about whomever's sitting <coughs> in the role of superintendent, yeah. it's through policy. Right. Um, because really the interpretation is mine right. and that you get to decide as a board it's either reasonable or not right. and the evidence is mine that you get to say is either sufficient or not right. um, so if there's if there's something specific like I think it gets to be tricky if there isn't any policy that says you want student voice but the expectation then is placed on having evidence that shows student voice but there's no policy that requires that right. it gets to be sort of muddy water a little bit Personally, the way I like to, to work, and this is how all of these interpretations were written through the Policy and Governance Committee that used to exist, was through conversation about like what do we, what do we collectively understand these to mean, and so that we generate these uh, interpretations collectively and we're all understanding it the same way. Additionally, talk through about what possible evidence is so that we're securing the kind of evidence that we all agree is the kind of evidence we're looking for. Um, that's a way to approach this. It's not a fail-proof way. Policy change is a fail-proof way. And so we would need to contemplate adding a policy? Right. Or modifying. Or modifying a policy. Right. Which we can get into. That's part of the rehearsals. At the, the, that's part of the practice in the rehearsals is talking through an issue using the policy and going back and, mm -hmm. and um, answering some questions and then having a conversation. So that's a, a place to understand how to get to that point, mm -hmm. um, to refine the policy if needed, to get you to a place where you're there, it's up to date, it's, it's capturing your values and um, doing that. So, uh, so that would that would be a place to do it, but I also think there's room in the ends to to cover that as well, as because some of the things you're we're asking 
to happen for students would naturally fall to that, you know, having them have a voice kind of thing as well. I mean, I think we're going to touch on some of this, mm -hmm. this un using our process and working through it, and where you'll see, oh, okay, here's a way to, to work. Um, yeah, I think that'll be a great opportunity for a conversation around this this yes. type of thing mm -hmm. on Monday. Yeah. All right. So, if I'm not hearing anything else, um, we'll go through our little um, <coughs> official board response. Based on the information provided, does the board find that the superintendent's interpretation is reasonable? Yes or no? Does the data demonstrate the accomplishment of this interpretation? Okay. All right. So, all those in favor of accepting the monitoring report 2.1 treatment of current and prospective students and parents or guardians, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. The new G is an action item. Um, it's policy 2.7 approved for posting. It was the changes to the policy that we have been talking about, and um, this is the official process we go through to, to approve changes. So <coughs> we just need a motion. So moved. Steve, all right. Second. And Andrew. <laughs> Any discussion? <laughs> Kevin. Um, so my recollection is we were going to hook this in somewhere that we would be aware of contracts maybe as a monitoring report topic are we are we still walking down that path as well yeah we uh, I think that the plan was that annually you'd get a list of contracts that were longer than one year and some monitoring report for one year or something. yeah so I think it would be uh, in monitoring report for 2.7 compensation and benefits That'd be the place, be a piece of evidence that could be included in that monitoring report. Um, and I used basically the language almost verbatim. I think that <coughs> came out of last month's meeting that obligations longer than one year shall occur on a limited basis, and in all events shall be subject to losses in revenue. So I think that was the, the language that we landed on. Mm -hmm. Something that worked. Okay, all those in favor of approving two point policy two point seven for posting, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? And that would be the perfect place, Kevin, where it, so let's say that list didn't show up in monitoring report two point seven next year. That'd be the time for the board or at least you to raise. I don't think there's sufficient evidence because it doesn't have this piece of evidence that we said we have to remember that long. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That's, that's the trick. <laughs> All right, so here we go again. <laughs> We're in need of another executive session. And um, this one, Title I, ESA 5313A1B, requires that we have a finding of premature not pub general public knowledge putting the district at a substantial disadvantage. And I would argue that because this, this um, the topic which we're going to discuss, which is the, co the collective bargaining agreements that, that are not public documents as of this point and have not been agreed to, so they cannot be disclosed in a public session, that that would put us at a disadvantage if we disclose them right now. So, is there a motion that given that, um, that um, we would that we would be putting the district at, at a disadvantage um, if we sh had premature general public knowledge around this topic. Is there a motion for that? So moved. Andrew? <laughs> Is there a second? Caleb? <coughs> all, right. all those in favor of agreeing that premature general public knowledge would put the district at a substantial disadvantage, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? We are so getting like common language for this yesterday. 
All right. Given that premature general public knowledge would put us at a disadvantage, we need a motion to go into executive session under Title I, VSA 5313A1B, Labor Relations Agreements with Employees, and invite Patrick and Katrina to join us. So moved. Steve? Is there a second? I'll second. Andrew? <laughs> I think we just have Don't to let like, you do the second. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right. We'll move down to board management and governance update from the negotiations. Um, <coughs> we've had an agreement and we'll uh, be ratifying it a little further down on the agenda. All right. Update from the Community Engagement Committee. The minutes were included in your packet, and everyone should have gotten that hello email from from me, from Krista. Um, she's looking for help. So if people are willing to volunteer to interview five people. Mm -hmm. a, a diverse group of people is helpful to the mm -hmm. Community Engagement Team. That'd be great. Just give Krista your, or get email her your address and packet will be mailed. Anything you want to add? I don't think so. I think things are coming along. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Um, I don't know that we have any legislative update from BSBA, so we're just going to skip along that one this yeah. time. Unless Caleb has something. Uh, unless oh, you're to share. <laughs> We've got a cider. Yeah, I mean, uh, honestly, I was I was just poking around the E.T. Digger for a second earlier, looking at the latest news story about Act 46 school uh, <laughs> delay, forced merger issues, which is unbelievably still just raging on and has gone to the point of <laughs> committee of conference, which I am not on, <laughs> between the House and the Senate, which completely just blew up on Friday. <laughs> The, you know, it doesn't seem to. So that that one's just sort of in the background. But honestly, we've been working on this miscellaneous education bill. It's got a bunch of stuff in it that pertains to some college issues and some other things. But those miscellaneous bills often have well, they become stuff. yeah, <laughs> kind of like a pendant. You know, you can put one thing in another. But it's been a little quiet. Uh, we've been looking at school construction, um, which was, you know, the the basic context. I think I've mentioned it before is that there used to be this school fund that for certain qualified costs you could get a 30 percent contribution from the state that's been gone for 12 years there's some talk of opening it back up i think the kind of capital committee of you know of um, all the buildings the state owns which would be sort of one of the natural places to help find that money is is pretty um hesitant to go diving into this issue and so it's going to be looked at by uh, essentially a, a committee of, I think, you know, we, we've talked through with the Vermont Superintendent Association with Jeff Francis uh, and some others, but trying to, given that this question about lead have come up, question about radar have come up, with ongoing security and environmental stuff, there's a, sort of a need for a better assessment tool for the state of school buildings and kind of post mergers. I think a lot of people are discovering that even within districts that have merged and things are going pretty well, there's really disparate levels of deferred maintenance that depends on the community and the decisions they've made and their, you know, desire to incur debt over the years. And so just I think um, that whole kind of conversation about school construction and financing is, you could say, kind of getting back burner and do more of but I hope they'll have a constructive, they're having a series of five meetings this summer. and so. We'll get some kind of report in the fall on that, but it is we've had some good testimony on it, and that'll that'll move. Um, but yeah, it, it's still you know the lead bill, which I mentioned, has bounced around the House committees. It's um, not totally in agreement with the Senate, so it's going to have to go probably to committee conference as well. So who knows? I I really don't know where it's going to come out, but there's two and a half million dollars is going to get spent one way or another I think, mm -hmm. on that issue. They land on a parts per million or. <coughs> the House landed on five, <coughs> the Senate landed on three. Okay. Conservation Law Foundation is advocating for something even lower, potentially. Um, so I don't know where that's going to wind up. I think there's a pretty compelling argument to go with five because 
I mean, that would be the lowest level in the country, significantly lower than the EPA. The EPA's level is not really health-based. But if you do have something that reads high and you have to bring in bottled water, the FDA regulates bottled water to five. So it's sort of like it seems, seems reasonable. that it's reasonable to go with the same thing that the FDA. Right. Bottled water is not clean enough. Is well, it, 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 could, it could make a really serious issue if you basically say that bottled water isn't yes, able to meet the standard if you've got a tap that's down. Soda for all kids, because we can't bring bottled water. Right, <laughs> <laughs> right, which so is probably the exact same. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah. sure yeah. the yeah. FDA is The bottled water is bad, I can tell you the soda is you know. probably not much better. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't think it's going to wind up below five, but um, you anyway, have more thoughts on that. But yeah, it has been a little, after an initial kind of fast start with a lot of the school merger stuff and then some other pieces, we've been a little bit quieter in, in the education committee, but um, yeah, there's this, I will say we've heard a lot about this, um, <laughs> this changeover to a statewide data system, there's all these statewide data systems, there's the longitudinal, longitudinal data system, which will be kind of comparing essentially academic information, um, but then there's also this accounting change that it goes along with this uniform chart of accounts thing, but basically the state said, I guess there's this process that every school district has to go through at the end of the year where they submit this big packet of information to the state that is time intensive. Um, and in addition to that, every district buys their own accounting software package, which costs money. So the state said, well, we're going to buy this accounting software package, and it's going to have a feature. Well, number one, the state's going to pay for it, so you don't have an individual license fee. And number two, the state's going to have basically a back door into it so they can draw that data themselves. And so it's going to save you, you know, money at the local level in theory because you don't have to prepare that report. We just basically go in and draw what we need. Um, the rollout of that is not going well. And, uh, and so, to put it mildly. Yeah, so we are receiving a lot of testimony to that effect, and I think we're moving towards a, a delay of is that, not the uniform chart of accounts, but this e finance thing. Is that all e because there's not enough people in the education department? I'm sorry. Is that coming? Isn't there just not enough people in the oh, whole department? In the whole educate agency of education, there there is some talk about you know initiative fatigue and and are there enough people there and there are a lot of overlapping initiatives for sure. They seem to say that this is more of an issue from it was going to be voluntary and then it got made mandatory and yeah. you know it it sounds like it's the kind of thing that will probably work out and maybe be a positive, but maybe some of the people who are going first have the widest gap between where they're trying to get and where they are now. I've, I've learned more about school accounting programs than I thought I would Hey, there's know. a job open. That's right. yeah. I've learned enough to know I don't want that job. Um, and I'm unqualified. Uh, but that's been an interesting conversation. I'll, I'll keep it at that. But yeah, so, you know, we there's all these... It, it, it really ties into... Um, into the new special ed bill that came last year, which was Act 173, which will move us to a block grant funding model. And all, kind, all these statewide data systems will play into having that be successful. And, and that's so also being considered for <coughs> delay, right? Everything's being considered for delay. <laughs> We are the committee of delay. <laughs> call this year. Thankfully, but no. next year there won't be anything new added to all those delayed things that you'll have to pick back yeah, up again. Hopefully next year. not. And I do think that the like capacity of the agency is something we had some like joint hearings yeah. on, and it's yeah, it's an interesting question. They just lost their CFO to the agency of natural resources, so that's, that's a big loss. Yeah, she was. Yeah. Yeah, the CFO of AOE just left for ANR. So mm -hmm. anyway, get all that. Um, mm -hmm. Those are those are some There's of like the fifteen acronyms in one. The fast post stuff. What is it all? Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. What's next? Well, thank you. Well. Yeah. Um, the the <coughs> next item, item D, which which should be item D, is um, to accept the monitoring report four point five board members. Code of conduct. Is there a motion? Second. Andrew? 
And Steve. Any discussion? No comments? Okay. Based on the information provided, does the board find that the interpretation is reasonable? Okay. Does the data demonstrate the accomplishment of this interpretation? Yes. All right. All those in favor of accepting monitoring report 4.5, board members, code of conduct, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. Next action is to ratify the support staff collective bargaining agreement. Is there a motion? To move. Caleb. Is there a second? The happy Andrew. Andrew did. Um, I'll do it. Sarah. <laughs> All right. Twenty. Like Any discussion? <laughs> Just thanks everyone who was involved. That's my discussion. Yeah. All right. All those in favor of ratifying the support staff collective bargaining agreement, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right. Next action item is to ratify the professional staff collective bargaining agreement. Is there a motion? So moved. All right, Krista. Is there a second? No second. Any discussion? Same. <laughs> Same discussion. <Ditto>. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> All right. All those in favor of ratifying the professional staff collective bargaining agreement, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Is there any public comment at this time? No public left. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Can somebody run through the meeting evaluation? Yeah. You got it. Andrew will do it. Great. Thank you. Ice, what is the level of engagement of all board members? Hi, well. Hi. 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 Comments about that? Oh, if you're, it's high, you can't put comments in. <laughs> <laughs> Was the agenda followed, yes or no? Yes. 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 How would you describe the board chair's effectiveness in establishing agendas and selecting materials for distribution to the board? So, terrible to awesome. <laughs> awesome. 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 How would you describe the board chair's effectiveness in fostering the official culture of the board regarding board training and full participation of all board members in on board training? Ask us next week. I have to write this. <laughs> I have to write right. this. Terrible, I have awesome. Seven. Terrible, seven. awesome. Seven. All right, seven. other seven. feedback seven. to the chair? None. What went well with the meeting? I loved our Rather tour guides. Contracts. And our tour guides were great. Yeah, they were very yeah. brave to do that. Great tour guides. Glad to catch the end of that. Sorry to miss the beginning. Ratified yeah. contracts. What suggestions do you have for ways to improve your chimney needs? Chirp, chirp. Yeah. <laughs> Be down. Yeah. All right. All right. Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Krista, is there a second? Oh, second. Oh, Kevin. All right, Kevin, jump out there. <laughs> all right. All those in favor of returning at 8.38, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Yes. Thank you. See you next week. See you then.